Greetings, Earthlings. Today I am back with a review of another... What is this? Oh, good. Another multi-pattern USB condenser microphone. I am so excited to test this out. Why am I yelling? So today we're looking at this guy, the brand new microphone from AKG, the AKG Lyra. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $150. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to my Mac. My computer's gain is set at around 50%, and the microphone's gain is maybe around 15%. It's impossible to know. But regardless, I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may boost the audio and post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. Of course, you are going to get the microphone, a 2-meter USB-C to USB-A cable, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, some documentation, and a registration card for Ableton Lite. Then, as far as the build quality of this microphone, it feels decent at best. It does have a metal mesh grill, which has a bit of give to it. The body is made completely out of plastic. The mounting joints are also made out of plastic. The dials are also made out of plastic, surprise, surprise. And they have a worrying amount of wobble, hobble, bobble, tobble to them or something. And the button does have a nice tactile click to it. On the front of the microphone, you will find a headphone volume control, as well as a polar pattern indicator light to let you know if you are on any of the four polar patterns, and you will find a microphone mute button. On the rear of the microphone, you will find a polar pattern selection dial to switch between all four of the polar patterns, and a microphone gain dial. And lastly, on the bottom of the microphone, you will find a USB-C port to connect this to your computer or your phone, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which does offer latency-free monitoring, and if you unscrew the microphone from the desktop stand, you will find 5 8 inch threading to mount this to a standard microphone stand. Then, as far as specs, this microphone has a front, front back, tight stereo and wide stereo polar pattern. In other words, cardioid, omnidirectional stereo, and double stereo. It has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a max SPL of 129 dB, a bit depth of 24 bit, sampling rate of 192 kilohertz, and it is compatible with Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS. Now I am on the front setting, assuming this is the cardioid polar pattern and this is how it sounds. I will go ahead and spin around the microphone to 90 degrees, show you how it sounds from the side, continue around to 180 degrees from the rear, then I will continue to the second 90 degree angle, and then rotate and end at the front of the mic. Now I am on the front back setting, which you would figure is a figure 8 polar pattern, no pun intended, but it is rather an omnidirectional polar pattern, and this is how it sounds. I will rotate around to 90 degrees to show you how it sounds here. There should be very little change in coloration and tone as we move around to 180 degrees, continue around to the second 90 degree angle, and then rotate and end at the front. Now I am on the tight stereo setting, which I believe is just a standard stereo microphone setup, and here is how the tone sounds. I will move around the microphone to the first 90 degree angle, show you how it sounds here. Continue around the microphone to 180 degrees, pretty dead back here. Continue around the microphone to the second 90 degree angle, and then rotate and end at the front. And lastly, we are on the wide stereo setting, which I believe, based on the diagrams, has a stereo set in the front and a stereo set in the back, and this is how the audio sounds. I will rotate around to the 90 degree angle, show you what it sounds like here, continue around the microphone to 180 degrees, here's how it sounds from the rear, continue around to the second 90 degree angle, and then rotate and end at the front of the microphone. Now I will go ahead and hit the microphone mute button to see what kind of noise that generates.
Now I have the Lyra on the provided desktop stand. It is about a foot and a half away from my mouth on the front setting or cardioid mode. And here is how it sounds. I will bang on a keyboard where it would normally be while I was typing on a computer. And here is how the audio sounds and why. You should not really use any of these microphones on the provided desktop stand. And now I am typing on a keyboard with the microphone on the boom arm to show you how the sound level compares. And now I am bumping on the desk to show you what kind of rejection the provided desktop stand can provide from that kind of noise. Bumping the table with the microphone on a desktop boom arm. Now I am going to go ahead and tap the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies with the body or the components. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you elite gamers, now we are typing on the sad W keys. Now I am right on top of the AKG Lyra to show you the proximity effect on this thing. About three inches off of the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here's how it sounds. One foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now I am speaking into the AKG Lyra about six inches off of the microphone in a well-treated room. And now I'm about six inches off of the microphone in a completely untreated room where I am definitely not being held hostage. And this is how the microphone sounds on the cardioid mode. That's a lot of reverb. Now let's test the plosive rejection. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now, to be as thorough as possible, I do want to include a quick comparison to the Blue Yeti X. So right now, I am speaking into the AKG Lyra on the cardioid polar pattern. My computer's gain is set at around 50%, and the microphone gain may be at 10%. I am 6 inches off of the microphone, and here is how it sounds. Now I am speaking into the Blue Yeti X at the exact same distance on the cardioid polar pattern. My computer's gain is set at 50% and the gain on the microphone is set at maybe around 15 or 20% and this is how the audio compares. Now with a sample rate of 48 kilohertz and an IO buffer size of 64 samples, we have a round trip latency of 8 milliseconds and an output latency of 3.5 milliseconds. When we jump up to 128 samples, we have a 10.5 millisecond round trip, or 4.5 millisecond output latency. And when we jump up to 256 samples, we have a 16 millisecond round trip latency, or a 7.5 millisecond output. Now, with a sample rate of 192 kilohertz and an I.O. buffer size of 64 samples, we have a 6 millisecond round trip, or 2.5 milliseconds output. When we jump to 128 samples, we have a 6.6 .6 millisecond round trip, or 2.7 millisecond output. And when we jump up to 256 samples, we have a round trip latency of 8 milliseconds, or an output latency of 3.3 milliseconds. <laughs>
we go, we've got another mic, and it's from AKG. With all the polar patterns I can pick, but which one's for me? Let me know in the comments down below because all of these polar patterns are so incredibly confusingly named. If you know anything about polar patterns, what is a front back? Is that similar to a front bottom? Is that going to get me demonetized? I don't know what's happening anymore. Please send help. I am sick and tired of multi-pattern USB condenser microphones that are just made to try to chase and eat up some of the Blue Yeti market. But I think that AKG has successfully made a very compelling option in the USB multi-pattern condenser microphone market. And first up, in terms of pros, it does record 24-bit 192 kilohertz. It also offers zero latency monitoring through the headphone output. Like all good USB microphones should, it does have a gain dial right on the back of the microphone, and it has a USB-C port, which I always like to see. But then in terms of cons, I would have liked to have seen a clip indicator light somewhere on this microphone, which it doesn't appear to have. There is also no mix dial for computer playback and zero latency monitoring. I also found the headphone volume control a little bit janky, where if you change your sample rate or if you power on and off the microphone, then you have to go in and reset the levels to what you want them to be. And the last con that I have actually has to do with the marketing of this microphone. On the box, and I believe on some of the product listings, it says 4K compatible Ultra HD audio. The reason I don't like that, there is no requirement for audio for 4K video. Anything that is 48 kilohertz is compatible with video. So I think that marketing is quite misleading and it is meant to trick people into thinking, oh, I have 4K video, I need to buy a microphone that says 4K compatible audio. That's not a thing. So what are my overall thoughts of this microphone? On the electric guitar, I rather enjoyed it on the rhythm because it had a very crunchy and crisp top end and at the same time a very punchy low end. But then when we jump over to the lead guitar, I think some of the higher notes start to get a little bit brittle and a little bit harsh. Then on the acoustic guitar, it offers a very open and airy sound and the way that I would describe it is chimey. It really captures the resonance of those upper strings quite a lot and brings it to the forefront. Then on singing, I would describe this as very, very, very clear. It has a big boost in the treble and air frequencies to my ears, and the low frequencies in this thing are very tame, so the upper boost doesn't really get offset and in my opinion, that's what leads to the recording sounding so clear and detailed. And lastly, for spoken word, if I can reuse a term I just used, I would call it a very detailed recording. The upper end has a boost, which makes the recording very intelligible, meaning it's very easy to understand the words that are being pronounced. And the microphone is also a bit sibilant. It is not the most painful or sharpest sibilance that I have heard, but it is definitely there, so it's something to be aware of. And as I mentioned during the singing section, the low end in this thing is very tame, and if you're just a few inches off, the proximity effect does not get out of hand. So would I recommend the AKG Lyra? Yeah, kind of. If you think that the Blue Yeti X is a little bit too muddy or a little bit too bassy or it doesn't have enough detail or clarity for you, that is where the Lyra comes in and becomes a very compelling and interesting option in the USB multi-pattern condenser microphone market. But it does have some drawbacks to it like I mentioned. First up, there is no clipping indicator light. Secondly, there is no mix dial between zero latency monitoring and computer playback. Both features, which I think are very important, and also the build quality comes into question here with the wibbly wobbliness of the dials. And with that being said, I am just left here wondering what AKG could have done 
if they had not focused on competing with the Blue Yeti and rather created a $150 cardioid USB condenser microphone, and I think that would have been much more interesting. If they had put the entire budget of this microphone into a single capsule, as opposed to four less quality capsules so they could fit all of them in there and compete with the Blue Yeti. I think that would have been much more interesting, and maybe we'll see that in the future, fingers crossed. And that is going to wrap up for today, so if you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big ol' thumbs down. If you want to see more videos, click the logo down beneath me. If you want to hang out in the Discord server, link in the description. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go ahead and click that join button and join at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you later. Bye.